the photograph please yes sir yes, yes sir. thank you now we move on to the next one the third ventricle as i told you the third ventricle is the cavity of the diencephalon that means the diencephalon is the region where hypothalamus and thalamus mainly are located in fact the walls of the third ventricle itself is the hypothalamus and the thalamus we will see it in more detail now now here is a coronal section of the cerebrum you can see the blue white dashed area is roughly the location of the third ventricle in fact you can see the cavity of the third ventricle okay and uh, more superiorly and laterally like the feathers of a blur bird that is the lateral ventricle we will come to the lateral ventricle little later but right now we will concentrate on the third ventricle now you see that's the third ventricle next that's the lateral ventricle above more important can you see one red circle dotted circle now that is the communication between the third ventricle and the lateral ventricle and that is called the interventricular foramen that's called the interventricular foramen next the hypothalamus forms the lower wall lower lateral wall as well as the complete floor of the third ventricle that's why i've shown it in red hypothalamus forms the complete lower lateral wall as well as the floor of the third ventricle then the thalamus is above it that means upper part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle is the thalamus right on the roof is the fornix it's a, it's a bundle of white fibers okay floor is the hypothalamus so these are roughly the walls of the third ventricle now the same third ventricle seen in sagittal section you can see the continuity of the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct i have marked the location of the third ventricle using the red white dashes uh, yeah oblique uh, or a yeah, oval area now that area the upper part of the oval is the thalamus in the lateral wall and that's the hypothalamic sulcus which divides this lateral wall into two parts a wall above and a wall below now the most characteristic feature above is the thalamus itself but the thalami uh, right and left are interconnected by a an adhesion called interthalamic adhesion in a sagittal section only the cut section of the interthalamic adhesion can be shown the hypothalamic sulcus is an important dividing line because the entire area below is the hypothalamus now that's the hypothalamic sulcus and the whole area below is the hypothalamus and the area above is the thalamus next now the fornix is a bundle of fibers okay which is located on the, virtually on the roof of the third ventricle it comes forwards and downwards forming a c shaped arc and then dips in and reaches the hypothalamus here it joins a, a component of the hypothalamus called the mammillary bodies called the mammillary bodies now the fornix is therefore a very very important structure closely related to the third ventricle if you notice carefully the interventricular foramen that connects the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle for the lateral ventricle is located right below the fornix as the fornix dips anteriorly downwards down that's an important relation you should note in fact when you when you see that blue arrow and trace it upwards you can actually see the arrow going into the uh, lateral ventricle next right there as the fornix dips down you will see there is just like you, you you saw that interthalamic adhesion like that there are some fibers crossing from one hemisphere to the opposite hemisphere you know that the corpus callosum is the largest commissural fiber uh, in the cerebrum like that there are other commissures commissure usually these commissural fibers connect one half of the hemisphere to the opposite half there is an anterior commissure i have shown it here at the anterior wall of the hypoth on the of the third ventricle that area in red and white dots is the anterior commissure again cut section of the anterior commissure then in front as you trace below the anterior commissure anterior wall continues 
so the lamina terminal is the lamina terminal is concludes or ends at the optic chiasma at the lower end now you see the optic chiasma the infundibulum the uh, mammillary bodies all these are uh, in the floor of the third ventricle now this is yet another specimen same details are being shown anterior commissure and the uh, lamina terminalis now right I, i have already shown you the optic chiasma right behind the optic chiasma is the infundibulum and the pituitary gland in this section the pituitary is cut off but the infundibular region is very clearly seen and the mammillary body is uh, further uh, behind it now that's the, the mammillary body is the spot where the the fornix fibers will end next this is a wet specimen i have taken it from the museum this is slightly better in clarity than the previous one because not only the infundibulum is seen the spot where the infundibulum reaches and uh, fuses with the floor of the third ventricle in the hypothalamus the tuber cinereum is also seen and when you trace the infundibulum below you can actually see the cross section of uh, the sagittal cross section of the pituitary gland in fact so clear it is you can even see the adenohypophysis in the neurohypophysis very very beautifully anteriorly the adenohypophysis posteriorly the neurohypophysis components of the pituitary gland next along the posterior we have finished the roof we have finished the posterior anterior wall we have finished the floor now we are moving into the posterior wall there are two structures in the posterior wall worth mentioning one is the pineal gland and look below the pineal gland the posterior commissure remember just like you had an anterior commissure there is a posterior commissure here i repeat posterior commissure and the pineal gland next there is a small component above this area the this what we are discussing now that the region is the epith epithalamus epithalamus next uh this posterior perforated substance is located in the floor of the third ventricle it is called perforated substance because there are number of arteries piercing the pia mater here and entering the hypothalamus that's why it's called the posterior perforated substance next um the mid brain that has been shown here is not really uh, uh, for today's discussion but it is nevertheless important to show it as an important relation to the third ventricle see the third ventricle floor is the hypothalamus but the hypothalamus immediately below lower down it continues with the mid brain therefore the uh, central canal or the canal of aqueduct is a very important uh, line of demarcation between the tegmentum of the mid brain anteriorly and uh, the uh, the colliculi that are located in the posterior part the tectal part so there are four colliculi also known as corpora quadrigemina a pair of superior and a pair of inferior colliculi now these are the additional points you need to mention in a discussion on the third ventricle next once again although a little far away from the third ventricle reasonably important to be um, mentioned is the massive commissural fiber called the corpus callosum is a huge band of commissural fibers connecting one hemisphere with the opposite hemisphere next between the corpus callosum and the fornix is the septum pellucidum the septum pellucidum is a central curtain that separates or partitions the two lateral ventricles the anterior part of the two lateral ventricles are uh, separated by a midline thin curtain called the septum pellucidum it's so thin often during dissection it falls off in bits and pieces invariably in a sagittal section you can actually see as i pointed in the arrow you can see a small component of the uh, lateral ventricles next here is an mri mid sagittal section i am showing the same items in a imaging modality mri you can see the thalamus you can see the hypothalamic sulcus and right below the hypothalamic sulcus you can see the lateral wall and the inferior wall of the hypothalamus further detail you see that's the 
flashing hypothalamic sulcus. Now we see further details as seen in the specimen is also visible in an MRI. That's the fornix going down into the mammillary body. There is an interventricular, the dark black area is the interventricular foramen. Lower down you can see the optic chiasma. You can also see the aqueduct of Sylvius this side. You can see the mammillary body and at the anterior wall you can see the lamina terminalis fusing with the upper surface of the optic chiasma. Now you see the same third ventricle is also visible in an horizontal section. Through if the section is at the level of the interventricular foramen. Please be uh, informed that this is a very important uh, slide for your understanding. The third ventricle has been shown in red white dashes, a oval area right in the sagittal plane. Immediately lateral to it, at the level of the interventricular foramen, you cannot see the hypothalamus because it is much below. Therefore, if the section is at the level of the hypoth of the interventricular foramen, what you will see immediately on the lateral wall of the third ventricle is the thalamus. Therefore, this is a beautiful slide where you can see the third ventricle with the uh, thalamus forming its upper lateral wall. Now, the fornix can be seen, the fibers. You can uh, once again also see the interventricular foramen connecting the third ventricle with the lateral ventricle. Same in an MRI section, you can see the midline cavity, that's the third ventricle. You can see the thalamus immediately lateral to it. Remember, no matter how many specimens I show you, discussion is incomplete if you do not see a, a imaging modality because nowadays the MRI brain is very, very commonly used for diagnostic purposes. Likewise, the fornix and the interthalamic adhesion. See, I told you. In a, in a sagittal section, you can only see the sectioned interthalamic adhesion, but in a MRI, you can see the actual bundle running from one thalamus to the other as pointed out by this white arrow. Now, that was a discussion on the third ventricle. We have seen where it is located. We have seen where its what are its walls. Then we have seen how these walls are related to important structures in its vicinity. Not to forget that uh, there is a choroid plexus in the third ventricle also. Similarly, in the next discussion, that is the lateral ventricle, there is also a choroid. Now, the choroid plexus are nothing but vascular bags that secrete cerebrospinal fluid. There is no direct communication of the third and the fourth ventricle to the subarachnoid space directly. However, all the fluid has to go through the cerebral aqueduct, central canal, and uh, uh, then reach the fourth ventricle. And in the 